Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be building a simplistic inventory system. Let's roll the introduction and get right into it. <laughs> Let's get started by creating our class file. We'll go over to our scripts and create the script itself. I'm going to name this script inventory, and then I'll make sure that I also name my file name inventory as well. Now to make this script an actual class, so we're able to encapsulate all our variables and functions, we also need to add the keyword constructor. Now I'm able to add variables and functions into here. So I want to start off with two variables. I'm going to have an inventory variable itself, which is just going to be an array to hold the items and the maximum number of items that our inventory can hold. Now, there are some other variables that you might want to put into this class, and we will get to those later on. But right now, let's start actually working on the functions. I'm going to be using an add function, and this function is only going to add items into the inventory. Let's actually add a sprite, a name, and then the object that we want to have appear once we use that particular inventory item. Now, the one thing that we need to keep in mind is we need to have an inventory maximum number of items. So that means that we need to always check to ensure that whatever is going to be in our inventory is going to be less than the maximum number of items, meaning that we can go ahead and add it into our array. Adding the items into our array is going to be pretty simple. All we have to use is array push will provide the actual array, and then the item that we're gonna be pushing into the array is going to be a structure. The reason I'm using a structure is really just so I don't have to remember that, you know, index one is going to be the name, index two will be the object. I'll forget that over time, but using a structure gives us named components that we can easily access. For example, if I wanted to have a named component as a sprite, I could just add the sprite in here. And I'm gonna do the same, but for the rest of them, which is going to be the name and also the object. Now, the other thing I also wanna add is a hover event, and this is gonna be used when drawing the inventory to the system. Now, I did mention coming back months later, and let's pretend we wanted to add a description in here. We could come up to the top and add an optional parameter with a description there, and then we could just easily store this in here as a description, and then reference the variable on the other side. So by default, all the descriptions will have nothing in them unless I call the function with this particular parameter in it. And that's all we need for the add function. I need a few more helper functions because I don't want to be playing around with the array directly. This means that when I return the array, I want to use something like a get all function, which is just going to return the actual array found within this class. Also, if we remove an item in our inventory, we also need a function to remove it. So we'll create a remove function where we pass the index in, and all we're going to do is wrap up the array delete function, which we pass the array and in index in, then how many we want to delete. GameMaker is automatically going to sort this back to a simple array for us, so we don't have to move the elements ourselves. I'm going to copy and paste in two more functions here. We are going to have a select function, which we pass in the array, and we'll just change the hover variable to true, and a deselect function, which we're calling within our select, is going to go through all of the items in the array and change the hover value to false. Now these will be used when we're selecting and deselecting items only. But this is the entire class that we need. I will be using an object to control the step and draw events. However, you could also move them into this class if you see fit. I'm going to name my object O inventory and I'm gonna create a dummy object here, and I'll just keep it as object two. Now, the reason I'm creating a dummy object is because we actually need an object to spawn whenever we use our inventory. So I'm just gonna have that blank for now. In the O inventory, we're gonna use a create event. We'll go to draw and draw GUI, and then finally, we will also pass in a step event. In the create event, we need to new up our inventory class, and we can do this by adding a new inventory into a variable. This means that this variable here is going to have access to all the variables and functions found within that script or class that we just wrote. So if we were to add some items into our inventory, we could type in inventory and hit the dot accessor, and you can see that we have all the functions here. So in this particular function, I know that the add is going to be a sprite, so I will use an item as ring, 
the name is going to be ring and then the object we will just use that dummy object too now what i can do is i can copy and paste this a bunch of times and i could also have a dagger in here if i spelt that correctly sorry about that and we could also have a sword and then we also have to change the appropriate sprite names now one thing you could test is you can go to your inventory and you could change the maximum number of items to two which would mean if we were to use that the last item which is the sword would not actually go into our inventory now because of this object i also need a way to determine whether or not to show the inventory I'm going to be using a key press to check on this and I'll be using this boolean to toggle the inventory on or off. So to do this, let's go over to the step event and create our first little if statement. Right here, all we're going to do is check to see if we've released the I key on the keyboard and then we will take the value that is found in is showing inventory and switch it. Meaning that if this item was true, then we're going to switch it to false and vice versa. Now, one thing that we also need to have happen is if we're no longer using the inventory we need to make sure that we deselect all of our items. The reason I'm doing this is because if I select an item in my inventory and then I take my inventory down, I bring it back up, I don't want that item to still be selected. Now, my math isn't the best, so if you know an easier way to do this, feel free to add that in the comments. But let's go through this. Right now, we need to make sure that we're showing the inventory and we're also going to check to see if the user has released the left mouse button, meaning that they've clicked somewhere on the screen. Because we are going to be using the graphical user interface, we need to take our mouse coordinates and transfer them onto that layer. Luckily enough, GameMaker has a built-in function for us. So we'll grab the X and Y coordinates based off of the graphical user interface. And now we get to the math, which I'm sure is going to be an easier way to do. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I grab half of the GUI or half of the graphical user interface. This will give me the direct center. And then I also need to know the number of items that could be on the left or right. So this means that right now, the way this math is, it's only going to work with uneven numbers. You can make it work with even numbers, you're just going to have to change the math a little bit. I also need to know each of the sprites widths. Now I do have my sprite set at 32 and then I'm adding some padding. This would be one of the variables that I would probably add into the class to get using the dot accessor. The final variables that we need to know is where the column is going to start. So I'm going to take half of the graphical user interface and minus the number of items that we have based on the sprite width and padding. This will give us where the column is going to start. So let's also figure out where the column is going to stop by adding that information in instead of deducting. Now we can figure out where we actually clicked. So let's go ahead and grab all of the items within our inventory. And now what we need to do is loop through every single item because each one's going to have a specific spacing. Then we'll check our mouse coordinates to make sure it's bigger than a column start. And then we'll add on each of those elements. So item number one, two, and three multiplied by our sprite padding plus 32. And then we're going to take away half of the sprite. The reason we're doing this is because if we look at our sprites, you can see that they are in the middle. So we have to move back 16 pixels. And then when we check on the other side, we're going to have to move to the right 16 pixels. So let's do the right side check as well. So we'll make sure that we'll check the left and right side. And once we've done that, we can easily go ahead and select that specific inventory item. Now to move on to the draw event, let's actually take a lot of the information that we already have. We're going to copy this and go over to the draw GUI event. I'm going to paste this in and we're going to clean this up. Before we do any of these calculations, let's actually check to see if we need the inventory item up or not. Now we already have half of the width. Let's also add in half of the height of the graphical user interface. Instead of a column start and stop, we'll use the X and Y coordinates. For the X, we'll take half the width and then we'll just move all the way to the left depending on the number of items that we have. For the Y position, we'll just use the direct middle of the screen. The first thing I actually wanna draw is gonna be a background for each of the inventory items. That means I can loop through the maximum number of inventory items. And then I'm going to just draw the specific background, which I'll name correctly here. And that will put a background in each individual slot. 
So if I have five slots, we'll draw five backgrounds. Now I can come down to the main for loop here. And for each of the items, what I wanna make sure is I draw the sprite itself. Now you'll notice that we are using a named argument and we don't have to deal with the element. So once again, this is just a benefit of using a structure. So once we have drawn the actual sprite for that element, let's check to see if they are hovered. If the element is hovered, we wanna make sure that we change our color to white. Then we'll just draw a rectangle around the box. You can see we're using the sprite, sorry, the sprite width and padding minus 16 and then plus 16 on the other side to get a true box. The very last thing I wanna do is draw the text. I'll make sure that I center it and then I'll use the X and Y positioning that we have above and then just pass the name in. The reason I'm using the transformed version is so that I can give it a rotation of 15. Now to get this running, I'm gonna to have to go into my room and pull the object inventory into my game. Now everything should be set up, so let's give it a run. So I have my project running, and if I hit the letter I on my keyboard, you can see that the inventory item comes up. Now I can go ahead and I can click on one of them and you can see that they get selected. The only thing that I can't do is I can't actually use one of the items here. I can also hit I to get my inventory to go down. So let's actually work on using those particular items. We'll close this and go into object two. In object two, I'm gonna make just a simple little thing. I'm gonna have the Y position move up three pixels and I'm going to also fade the image alpha out by a certain amount here. So I'll have a lerp command, which I wanna fade the alpha out to zero using 0 0.2. So this is gonna fade the alpha over time. And what I'll simply do is I'll check to see if the alpha is less than 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.1. And if it is, I'm going to destroy it. The next thing I'm going to do is add a draw event and draw on the graphical user interface. And I'm just going to set the alpha to what it is. I'm going to set this as item used and uh, we'll just have everything reset when we're done. So that means if we go back into the inventory and we go to the step event, right here we are actually selecting the item. We need to use this item if it's already selected. Luckily enough, we have a hover event. So we could say if the item is already hovered, then we're gonna use it. Otherwise, we want to select it. So if we go into the hover event here, all we'll do is we'll create an instance of object two based off the mouse X and Y. And as you just saw, it should just create some dummy text and then fade out. The only thing that we have to do is make sure that we remove this item from our inventory so we can remove the I index. So if I run this one more time, hopefully this will give us a simple inventory. If I hit I, I can click on a dagger, a sword, a ring. As soon as I click on the ring again, you can see the item was used and removed from our inventory. You can add as many items as you want to this inventory and then just remove them from your game. So this will keep everything clean and simple to use. If you wanted to add stacks, you could just easily add that as another parameter in your variables and add it into your structure. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. A special thank you to the following patrons in no particular order. Jerrica, Game Maker, Mary, Robert, Victor, Ashby, and Paul. Once again, thank you all for the support, and I'll see you in the next video.